Hello, so today I decided that I wanted to do a little bit of a video tutorial, if you will, about how to use or how to make, for instance, a drum track in Pro Tools Express using Expand 2. And I really just wanted to do this because when I started out, when I just got Pro Tools Express anyways, I looked for something like this and I couldn't really find anything. And yes, yeah, so I just wanted to help people out if they're looking for something like this. And it's really quite simple. And this works for any instrument, not just drums. So what I'm going to do, you can just put this into a session that you already have, but for the purpose of this video, I'm going to create a blank session. I'm just going to save the session on the desktop as session. My spelling sucks, so that is probably not right. I'm going to make two folders because I'm like that sometimes. The first thing that I normally do in a session like this is create a tick track. What it, ah, sorry, a click track. What a click track does is it's pretty much a metronome. So if you listen there. And I just find that pretty helpful in stuff like this. How I've got mine set up is to go to a line grid wise with the tempo. And you can change your tempo, tempo sorry, by clicking on this little red thing. Just double click that and you can actually hit T on your keyboard as a sort of tap tempo. So I mean you don't have to do that right now but in general if I have a beat in my head or whatever I'll start that way. Because then you can just sort of work from there. So the next thing that I would recommend doing is creating a new track by going up here to track new, then uh, I'm going to choose a stereo master fader. And it doesn't really matter too much if you're going ticks or samples for this track. And all that the master is for is, well, it is what it says it is, really. It's um, the track that all the other tracks are going to go through. So for instance, if you want to add, say, reverb or something to your whole track, and you want all of your instruments and recordings to have the same amount of reverb, I would recommend putting your reverb on your master fader. Which, there's the reverb there. Another thing that's pretty useful to put on your master fader is this, the Bottom Factory meter bridge. Um, this is a free download that you can actually get if you just type in Bomb Factory Essential Meter Bridge or whatever for Pro Tools. And you can get that yourself. And what that tells you is pretty much it'll tell you how loud everything is and whether or not you're peaking and stuff like that to try and get your levels as even as they can be. Anyway, so into what we're actually here for, I guess. To create an instrument track, you've got to go up to Track, New. And Mono Stereo doesn't really matter. I guess I'll go Stereo. Go Instrument Track. You'll see it automatically changes to Ticks over here. And then you go Create. You can rename this if you want. I will just call this, for instance, drums. And OK. To rename you just double click on that. So to put expand in and our drums, you just click over here. You go to the track that you're looking for, which in our case is the drum track. Click up here, multi plan no, multi channel plugin, instrument, expand to. There are other instruments that you can use. I generally stick to Expand 2 because it's got a lot of variety for a free plugin. And it's, you know, the sounds are pretty good too, so that helps a lot. So it'll start you out with Beneath the Waves over here. I have a MIDI keyboard, but I'm not going to be using that today because I realize that a lot of you might not have MIDI keyboards. So to test that this is all working, what you're going to want to do is right-click here. Well, this is one of the ways to do it anyways. Right-click, go to Mi Open in MIDI Editor down at the bottom here. And what that'll bring up is pretty much this virtual keyboard over here. And if you hit, sorry, if you hit any of these, it'll start to play. Um, so that's pretty useful, I suppose. And you can zoom out by holding, if you're on Mac, Option and then scroll. Uh, I'm using a magic mouse so that I can scroll sideways as well, just in case anyone's interested. So, this is Beneath the Waves. It's sort of, I haven't really used this effect or this instrument, if you will. And that's just because it's quite weird if you listen. It. 
So, to get drums, what you're going to want to do is jump to the preset over here and go drums or percussion if you want something more like that. And I guess just pick one of these. I'll just pick the rock kit over here. And you'll see it'll automatically select all of these drums for you. And that's why I recommend going up to the presets. Because if you try and do it individually, it's going to take longer. And you won't necessarily get the sound that you are thinking of. Um, so that's pretty much that. You can add effects and stuff over here if you really want. Just make sure when you are tweaking the effects that it is actually activated down here. Else... You know, you won't hear them at all. If you click over here, <clears throat> sorry, uh, you can choose what type of effect you want. So if you want a bit of delay or whatever. In general, if I want delay, I wouldn't put it in here because there isn't, they're very limited effects. But for stuff like this and maybe a bit of reverb or whatever, it's actually very useful. You can adjust your levels over here should you need to. But for now, I'm just going to keep it exactly like this. So I can go ahead and close that. And you will notice that we now have some drums. So if we go down, I think here somewhere. Yeah, here we go. Here we have the bassiest ones. And to put them in, all you would do is just double click wherever you want. And yeah, I'm not in particular going to make any drum beat. I'm just sort of putting down beats here and... So as you can hear, I've still got click on. For now, I'm just going to mute that by going over here and clicking mute. And that's just because we don't really need that right now. So if you hear, that is that. And I mean, that's pretty, you can do whatever you want. If you need to adjust your tempo afterwards, you can just click on this red one again and adjust it and it'll adjust everything. If you do do it later on down here, for instance, and you try and adjust it, it will actually adjust the tempo halfway through your song. So I wouldn't recommend that. I would recommend always clicking over there if you're looking to do that. You will notice that I have it selected so that I can move beats around in beats. I generally don't use slope mode. I use grid mode over here. What grid mode allows you to do is exactly what this is, it, you, where you can, uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry, where you can grab something and just move it over to the next grid, but it works for stuff like this as well. If you notice, it'll only move in a grid now. That's very useful for when you're doing music editing, because if you go slip, you can put it anywhere, which I personally don't like, but you might like that, so, you know, whatever. So, let's move on, shall we? We're going to create another new track, another instrument track, stereo, create going to slap expand on here again and this time I'm going to put a violin because I don't know I just sometimes like to work with violins the violins in strings solo violin is the one that I like and then hey let's put a bit of reverb on so I've activated it down here and I'm just going to put some reverb on and over here I think that I'm going to use ensemble Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, and then you can use more than one at a time. I'm just going to call this violin. Yep. And then whoop, open in MIDI editor. And we can start. So to do what I just did there, what you're going to want to do is double click and then drag. Because if you just double click, it'll just make it. A, you can also drag it out over here. But, you know, that's up to you. To get rid of something, you just double click it again. Something else that you might also find uh, useful is if you, for instance, you've got this. And you think it's too harsh, so you want it to sound softer. What you're going to want to do is hit command and you'll get this little thing and you click and you drag down and it'll go softer or less, you know, it'll have less attack on the instrument and up will have more attack. You'll notice that specifically with trumpets and stuff like that, they'll get a lot more aggressive. Uh, hmm, I think that's pretty much the basics. If you want to copy something, you hold Alt or Option on Mac and you click and drag. And yeah, uh, I, 
I think that's about it for this little simple tutorial of using Expand. Um, if there's anything else that you want to see, please uh, leave it in the comment section. Thank you for watching. This is my first tutorial for Pro Tools. I'm thinking of doing some more. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you come right.